Well, my name is Joe Jennings. I'm an activist with the Friends of the Earth Sydney Collective. Our Friends of the Earth is a federation of environmental collectives that do grassroots activism for the cause of climate justice. We perform corporate research, we do workshops for skilling up of activists and we participate in direct actions and broader actions as well. We have a number of focus areas including work campaigning against carbon traders, work campaigning for climate justice in affected communities across the world and also we do campaigning on the issue of population and the way that it's influenced Australian politics. Well we've noticed that over the last few years there has been a movement in the, um, in, within the environmental movement and within politics in general to equate the idea of Australia's population to the environmental uh, to environmental issues such as climate change um, but also local environmental issues such as water usage. Uh, often when purely racist groups have tried to hijack the environmental movement or um, when genuine environmentalists have spoken up probably without due consideration for the implications of what they're saying. And we're concerned by this move towards populationism because first we see it as an ineffective way of dealing with climate change but also a thoroughly unjust, unjust set of measures. You can't take population levels in, within Australia and address it in a way that genuinely addresses climate change. The number of people living within a certain area or the number of people living in the world is not the root cause of the problem. Particularly not when we have a society whereby a small proportion of the world's population, a small wealthy proportion, consumes and affects the climate so to a much greater degree than the majority of the world. The problem here is the unjust nature of our society and unjust levels of power and consumption. If we want to address climate change, our measures need to address this unjust distribution of resources and power. Measures that restrict people's movement across borders, measures that restrict women's reproductive rights in the name of controlling population aren't going to solve any problems. And just as importantly, these measures are very dangerous. The most recent example we've seen has been the change to trade recognition laws um, for international students on an international student pathway towards permanent residency. This has resulted in a very unjust situation whereby a great number of people who invest a lot of time, money and effort into gaining permanent residency have had that pathway taken away from them without any notification, without any chance to make up for these problems. And the things that we'll see in the future are purely racist. I mean, in a lot of ways it resembles the white Australia policy and the implications are going to be the same. It's going to be marginalisation of migrant groups, criminalisation of international workers and students, and it's going to be to the detriment of Australian society without any actual benefit for the environment. In my experience, at least, there have been a number of ways that this kind of thing has come to the fore. In terms of the sexist aspects to it, um, the, the flip side of the population debate is the um, as a means to control reproductive rights. We haven't seen as much of this in Australia as the attacks on migration, but it's certainly present. Um, one example is a scheme that's been trialled in the UK called population offsets, whereby corporations and people in wealthy countries pay to have an NGO um, operate in a majority world country and undertake either sterilisation procedures or family planning consultations. This invariably um, affects women in these countries more than men and creates financial coercion for them to give up their reproductive rights purely because they happen to be in a majority world country and that's entirely unjust. We'll say the, the positive steps that we need to address climate change. What we do need to do is build a global climate justice movement that, first of all, before anything else, recognises the burden that the wealthy people of the world have for having been the majority of the cause for climate change. 
we can't create any change by attacking migrants or by attacking the majority world. We need to have a climate justice movement that, first of all, recognises the causes of the problems and um, creates reparations and cr creates a redistribution of power and wealth in order to make sure that the root causes of the climate change are addressed. Well, there are great big problems with the means by which the first world or the minority world have achieved their standard of living. I mean, it's a very inequitable, very environmentally damaging way to develop. You look at Australia, for example, there are lots of things we do that, that affect the environment that we don't have to do. We provide free water for coal-fired power stations and for coal mining. We produce most of our electricity with dirty coal-fired power stations. This isn't the way we have to do it. You know, we spend a lot of time mining coal that doesn't have to be mined. It can just stay in the ground. And I think a lot of people, um, as part of the population debate, as a corollary to it, say that, or imply that people in the majority world, people in the third world, don't have the right to achieve the same levels of development because of the impact on the environment. But this isn't true. It just means that it needs to be done so in a more just, more equitable, more sustainable way. I'm a member of Friends of the Earth, as uh, the rest of the people in the collective, because um, we feel that it's important to consider the climate justice aspects to the climate movement. Um, I mean, the root causes of climate change are inequity, and it would be unjust and ineffective to address climate change in a way that doesn't recognise this. You know, the, the big problems, the climate justice, and that's what Friends of the Earth is there for. Anyone who is interested in doing more than donating a few dollars, anyone who would like to be directly involved in the fight for climate justice would find themselves very welcome in Sydney Friends of the Earth. Um, but anyone who would like to have a chat about any of the issues would be very happy to hear from you as well.